Trickle-down economics has failed the country for decades. It means slashing public investment on things that helped America lead the world in innovation. You know, we used to invest 2 percent of our entire gross domestic product in research and development. You know what it is now? 0.7 percent. We used to be ranked number one in the world in research and development. You know where we're ranked now? Number nine. China's number eight a decade ago, and now China's number two. And other countries are closing in fast. This is the United States of America, for God's sake. We used to have the fastest infrastructure, the best infrastructure in the world, rated number one. Now we're rated number 13 in the world in infrastructure. How can you have the best economy in the world and not have the best infrastructure in the world? Under my predecessor, Infrastructure Week became a punchline. Every, every, every month. Anyway, it's just, I won't get into it. <laughs> On my watch, we're making infrastructure a decade headline. A decade. Yesterday, we announced that since I took office, we've attracted a half a trillion dollars, $497 billion in private investment in American manufacturing, both here and around the world. It's historic. And it's Bidenomics in action. Instead of expor exporting jobs to cheaper labor for costs, what we did for decades, we're creating jobs here and exporting American product. Product, not jobs. That's the story here in South Carolina. Earlier, we heard the leadership of Enphase uh, say that $60 million they're investing here. Well, that's 1,800 jobs across the country and up 600 permanent jobs right here in South Carolina. All a direct result of the so-called Inflation Reduction Act that wrote, we wrote and passed. Well, that's, that's the last day of the past where so much money is coming in to make all this happen. And by the way, parenthetically, I want you to know you're going to hear about the deficit. I cut the deficit $1.7 trillion in two years. Nobody's ever done that. Cut the debt $1.7. This generates income. It generates growth. Enphase first commercialized the component that converts solar energy into electricity. All that solar energy doesn't do a whole lot of good if you can't do it and can convert it into electricity. It's called, they invented a thing called a solar microinverter. Jobs that used to go to Mexico, India, Romania, and China are now coming home. South Carolina. Now Enphase is partnering with Flex to make these parts here in South Carolina. And today, they're shipping their first microinverters made in America. <laughs> made in America. This is it, friends. The Internal Revenue Service is releasing its final warning to all Americans. There's just a few more days left for eligible Americans to claim up to $1,000 in unclaimed refund checks. Also, SNAP beneficiaries are now seeing monthly benefit errors as emergency allotments come to an end. My dearest friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video, especially if you receive monthly benefits. Also tomorrow, which is Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the $75 Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on my friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. The temporary boost to SNAP benefits during the crisis ended nationwide earlier this year. And since then, the Center for Budget and Policy Priority says that millions of Americans have seen their monthly SNAP benefits shrink by at least $95. One way that Americans have been able to stretch their SNAP dollars this summer is by buying fresh fruits and vegetables at local farmers markets. Across the United States, some farmers markets will match every SNAP dollar spent up to a maximum. So, for example, if you purchase $20 worth of fresh produce, you only use $10 of your own benefits. At most markets, shoppers can visit the market information booth to swipe their EBT card in exchange for tokens for market vendors 
on SNAP eligible items. These eligible items are the same as what you can purchase at grocery stores. But on June 30th, 2023, the United States Department of Agriculture released a statement reporting high rates of SNAP payments made in error due to challenges experienced during the crisis. States had an overpayment error rate of nearly 10%, which is a 3% increase from fiscal 2019 to fiscal 2022. According to the Washington Examiner, there was also an underpayment error rate of 1.7%. The USDA claimed that the higher than average error rate was because of staff vacancy rates at state agencies as high as 25%, as well as a period of difficulty hiring new case managers during a time of elevated demand. USDA Deputy Secretary Stacy Dean recently stated, the first state-by-state -state set of payment error rates coming out of the crisis reflects the challenging circumstances under which the state agencies were operating and from which many are continuing to recover. The USDA detailed that this error rate is not because of fraud. Instead, it's largely due to unintentional mistakes by the state agency or household that resulted in the state determining that an applicant was eligible when they were not or incorrectly calculating benefit amounts. Overpayment rates are not a loss to the government. The reported error rates do not account for the fact that while some households received an overpayment of their benefit, the reported error rates do not account for the fact that while some households received an overpayment of their benefit, the combined total of the regular SNAP plus their emergency allotment payment did not exceed the capped amount. The Internal Revenue Service is also issuing a final reminder to the nearly 1.5 million American taxpayers who have yet to claim their 2019 tax refund. IRS Commissioner Danny Werfel said in a new statement, the final window closes on July 17th for taxpayers who didn't file a tax return for 2019 to claim their refund. The IRS continues to urge people who may have overlooked filing during the crisis to act quickly before they lose their final chance to claim a potentially substantial refund. So not all taxpayers who need to file a return will be due a refund, but the IRS encourages all taxpayers to file. If you didn't file a tax return for the 2019 tax year, here is what you need to know about claiming your funds in time. There are about $1.5 billion worth of unclaimed funds remaining, and this is according to the IRS. Any funds that are not claimed by the July 17th deadline will be turned over to the U.S. Treasury. The IRS says that the average median refund for tax year 2019 is about $893. For low and moderate income workers, though, these refunds might be even larger. Workers whose 2019 income qualifies for the Earned Income Tax Credit may be eligible for up to $6,557, according to the Internal Revenue Service. So friends, if you have not filed a return for your 2020 and 2021 tax years, the IRS can withhold your 2019 check. The IRS also said that refunds will be applied to any outstanding payments owed to the IRS or other state tax agency. Refunds may also be put towards unpaid child support payments or past due federal debts. Well, my awesome and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Thursday. My dearest friends, thank you so very, very much for joining me here and for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, I will be announcing several winners tomorrow for the $75 Walmart gift card giveaway. Please make sure you enter the giveaway, my friends, by clicking and liking several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, my greatest friends, 
the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed Thursday.